So Live Wired, the inside story of the ever-changing brain by David Eagleman, has something for readers of all backgrounds. The term Live Wired captures the key idea that our brain is constantly changing its circuitry. While this is obviously essential to our survival, it sets the brain apart from the computers that have become a ubiquitous part of our daily lives. It also captures the equally important idea that our DNA does not provide a blueprint for the brain. It provides some basic instructions. But as Eagleman said, DNA is only half the secret of life. He said the other half is all around us because it's everything that we experience in the world. That's the thing that really wires our brains to be who we are. Textbooks give one the impression that the sensory and motor cortex are hardwired, but this is not exactly accurate. The brain actually learns to move whatever sort of body it has, and as the example of the dog who could walk on his hind legs showed, this is driven by the needs of the person or the animal. If a part of the cortex that is normally wired for a particular sensation or body part loses that input, it does not just do nothing. It takes on new functions. In fact, there appears to be an ongoing competition for cortical real estate. How is this flexibility possible? It gets back to those spikes that we talked about last month with Mark Humphreys. No matter what the original source, all information is translated into spikes or action potential. This means that a part of the brain that typically processes vision can process touch instead, for example. As Eagleman said, the brain just has to figure out what to do with the spikes. And as I mentioned a minute ago, this has to do with feedback. We talked quite a bit about sensory substitution, including the famous experiment where sighted people were blindfolded to learn Braille. The most surprising finding was how fast cortical change can occur in under an hour. This is faster than the brain can create new connections, so it implies that previously inhibited connections have been activated. This has important implications, especially in the field of rehabilitation. Now, obviously, not all parts of the brain are equally flexible. The sensory areas become fixed over time, while motor areas and memory areas remain more flexible. Eagleman proposed that the key determinant may be the nature of the input. Once the brain learns the nature of visual information in the world, that's unlikely to change. But our body continues to change and grow, and it needs to be able to adapt. Memory is an obvious area where live wiring is critical. But the typical synaptic model of memory does not account for how human memory really works. Eagleman proposed an alternative pace level model where processes working on different time scales interact. It's really important to understand that living beings do not store memories the way a computer does. In a computer, each memory is independent, but our memories are always dependent on what has gone before. This is one reason why you and I will not have identical memories, even of experiences that we shared. Eagleman reminded us that keeping our brains flexible depends on presenting them with novelty. If our lives are totally predictable, our brain doesn't really have to be flexible. Since the brain is a prediction machine, it loves ruts, but we have to challenge it if we want it to remain flexible. One thing that stood out for me was his comment that the best thing we can do for our brain is interact with other people because people are always unpredictable. This puts an interesting spin on the data that shows how important social interaction is, along with the damaging effects of social isolation. This is something to keep in mind the next time you're tempted to avoid social interaction because it seems like too much work. That work is exactly what your brain needs. I want to end my summary with an overview of what I think are the key ideas of Live Wired, the inside story of the ever-changing brain. Neurons fight for territory and survival. The brain maps are not genetically prescripted, but are instead molded by input. Eagleman wrote, brains adjust to drive whatever body they find themselves in. This is on page 137. The rate of change influences whether a particular area remains plastic. Finally, each of us is the product of our interaction with the world. And human brains do not store memories the way computers do. Again, I highly recommend this book no matter what your background.